Thanks, Liesl. Now, I don't know if you know this, but South Africa is currently the primary producer of quality mohair in the world. Now, by mohair, I'm not talking about hair from people like Carl Wasty's head, but actually fibre shorn off the Angora goat. Now, the development of this industry has inspired fashion designers to work with the fabric and bring forth high-quality designs. And the gentleman sitting right next to me here is an award-winning textile designer from the Eastern Cape who uses his Kosa heritage as inspiration for his knitwear and fashion garments, Mr. Laduma Ngokolo. Good morning, good to have you here, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, reading up your CV, man, you have done absolutely amazing things in the world of fashion design, especially using textiles like mohair and wool. Let's talk about where you started off with knitwear, because, uh, you know, it's not guys, it's something that guys are usually associated with. Uh, for me, it actually started as a hobby um, back in um, 2003. Mm -hmm. I used to help my late mother um, with um, actually knitting up garments um, for sale. Yeah. So from, from then on, I actually took it uh, as a career, you know, um, I actually studied textile design in high school yeah. and then continued up uh, to varsity where I specialized in men's knitwear. Wow. So um, that, that is where it actually started. You're very humble about that. I mean, you, you, you don't say that you graduated cum laude, distinction-wise, at NNMU. Yes, um, I actually, um, I was a, uh, a fanatic in, in, in back in university, so I actually um, I paid attention to details, so um, some say I deserved it. Wow, that is amazing. Let's talk about some of the awards that you've received along, along the way. <clears throat> uh, you've been featured in countless magazines, you've gone international with some of your work. Um, um, in 2010, while I was doing uh, my BTEC at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, I actually entered an international competition where I actually won the nationals and the international league. So wow. um, that is when I, st I started getting achievements um, for, for my project, network project. And then after that, in uh, 2011, I was, um, I was uh, given an award by Marie Claire as the Emerging Design of the Year. Dude, that is amazing. I think we, we really want to see some of your designs right now, and I'd like you just to kind of take us through the design uh, and tell us what inspired that specific one. Let's bring out our first model uh, right now. You'll see him coming around the corner. Look at that. Tell us about that design. Um, this design was actually um, inspired by um, traditional Corsa beadwork, um, where I actually take um, traditional Corsa motifs and patterns and then um, convert them into modern, fresh designs. So I actually. Um, I play around with um, Corsa colors, you yeah. know, like the type of color palette that I use and the, and, the, and the line work that I actually use in the designs are actually originally from traditional Corsa beadwork. And that's part of your award-winning designs called Makosa? Yes, 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 that's part of the range. Amazing stuff. Let's take a look at the, the next one coming out. Um, and all of this, so this specific range, are you using mohair in this one? Um, I use um, about 50% um, mohair and 50% yes. uh, merino wool. And, um, the, the, the raw material that I use for the knitwear is actually from the East, proudly from the Eastern Cape. So um, actually, um, this, this is um, actually an Eastern Cape product. You know what, when I look at this, it takes me back in the day. It's got a very kind of retro feel about it. Mm. And that was part of your inspiration, obviously, when you put this together. Yeah. And that's amazing that people on the, on the international front are also appreciating our designs and, and, and you know, they want to take them on. Yes, I was actually overwhelmed by, 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 by that um, response that I actually got from overseas, you know, because when I initially designed the collection, I actually designed for the local um, Corsa Initiates market, you know, yeah. and, um, and then it expanded to actually other markets, which is um, local men's market, which, which doesn't have a lot of um, traditional um, inspired um, clothing ranges. So it has been um, an awesome project to work on for me. Very true. Well, when we come back from the, from the break, we're going to find out what your future plans are. I mean, obviously, there's, a, there's an, an amazing future that lies ahead for you in, in the textile and the design industry as well. But uh, another amazing young person who did amazing work at the Cape Town uh, in Daba, design in Daba. We hung, we hung around with her. She's 22-year-old Kelly Esteres and from PE. Looks like everyone who does well in design comes from, from PE. And we find out exactly what her work is all about so check this out a young new designer took sa fashion week by storm with her geometric designs mohair and hand knitted wear expresso met up with the winner of the 2012 el new talent search kelly esther hazer winning the el new talent was a really incredible experience it was really an incredible competition to be a part of it just gets us out into the fashion worlds and i've learned a lot from it and got incredible exposure from the competition my love for fashion really started when I was young, when my friends were drawing 
pictures of their families. I was drawing clothing and in grade 10 it was an option to actually take it as a subject and that's where I really got into fashion design. Hailing from the mohair capital of the world, Port Elizabeth, Kelly naturally created a range made with hair from the Angora goat. This fiber is incredibly luxurious and versatile. I'm inspired by many things, mainly nature, just different patterns or colors. Designer, I'm mostly inspired by Sandra Buckland. She's a knitwear designer and she also hand knits like I do and she uses architectural forms and shapes. The theme of the competition was show me your pattern and Kelly's range is praised for being both commercially viable and artistic. She also tapped into a huge trend, craft. The range's name is Uliana and it means creative spirit in French. I had a lot of tension in my back from knitting and sewing so much from crunching over and I uh, googled tension and the pictures that came up were of x-rays. I was very inspired by the geometric shapes in the pictures and that's what gave me the idea for all the jerseys. All the garments that I knitted for SA Fashion Week were all hand knitted so it was a very long process. It took three months to make eight jerseys. Trend analyst Dion Chang called Kelly's designs fresh and L editor Jackie Berger praised her for using a homegrown textile. So let's take a closer look. Christy is wearing my showstopper outfit. I try to really make it the wow item, so I made the whole sleeve fur. These fur sleeves are detachable and they detach with eight of buttons here. And you can wear this jersey by itself without the sleeves. These cables here are representing the spine in the back from the x-ray. And this, just the rib shape, and I try to really accentuate them and make them pop out because it really does look like bone structure. And then she's wearing leather pants. I try to keep quite a natural feel going, so I used natural tones, which is cream and brown, and I just put this detail on the edge as well. This jersey's made out of mohair, and it's got a blend of wool and silk in it, so it's softer on the skin. The plait detail here on the wrist signifies all the tension that I had in my back at the time. It's just so tight and big and bulky so it really gives the, the tension feel around the arms. While merino wool is highly prized around the world, it's a much underutilized resource in South Africa. Kelly's excited to help change this. Lots of young people think that knitting is really uncool or only grannies knit, and that's also what I'm trying to do by showing the public that knitting is actually cool. Joining the likes of previous winners David Klale and Tia Nachel, this young designer's certainly one to watch. Some fantastic work being done by young SA designers, the likes of which is sitting right next to me over there, Mr. Laduma Ngokola. And now his studies were actually made possible by Mohair South Africa that were part of the funders of his bursary when he studied at uh, Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. With us, uh, I've got Dion Simon, who is the general manager of Mohair South Africa, to give us a bit of a background. Because as I said, when you hear Mohair, you, you think Mohawks, but it's actually something that's pretty cool and, and it, it contributes to our South African economy. It is a huge contributor to our economy and what people don't realize yeah. is that South Africa is the biggest producer of moe in the world. Yeah. And not only that, we produce the best quality in the world. Wow. Now, we began our involvement with the NMMU approximately 10 years ago. And what we found is that the younger generation does not know what moe is. It does not know True. I mean, <laughs> what fantastic attributes this natural product has. Yeah. And we wanted to get the young designers, the new generation involved in getting to know mohe and to, to use it like uh, Laduma is doing when they um, have qualified at the NMMU. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's a brilliant fibre, it's a natural sustainable fibre. And South Africa is really the pivot of the global moe industry. Wow. And that's why Port Elizabeth is also known as the moe capital of the world. Wow. So tell me a, a bit about what you've brought for us and exactly at what stage of the mohair development phase is it and what it can do at that time? Right, this is as it is shorn off the goat. Uh, we call it the greasy. It looks almost like Beyonce's hair. <laughs> Very cool. Well, you say that, moe is, is used in wigs. It, are you serious? Yes. In like weaves and wigs? Absolutely, because it is the closest <laughs> fiber that, uh, to human hair. And when you wash a mohair garment, you actually wash it with shampoo, normal hair shampoo. Unbelievable. So this is the greasy as it is shorn off the goat. Yeah. Right? Then it goes through a washing process after it's been washed you get what you call a scoured. Yeah, that's now like a blow-dried weave. Yeah, almost, yes. Now, already you can see the natural luster of moe coming through, you know, the shininess, and that's what moe is so well known for. Oh, so soft. Extremely. Wow. And then, from the washing process, it goes and it's made into a top. 
all the yarns, all the fibers are basically just arranged in, in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And from this mohair top, it's then twisted yeah. and stretched into a yarn. And wow. that's when you get the actual yarn. And then that's where a guy like Laduma would come in and, and purch he... purchase the yarns and make his fantastic garments with those. That is amazing stuff to see. I think that I always just gain so much more of an appreciation when you see where something started and at the end of the day you see the design and it's looking great and you see that where, where, where it started, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely incredible. So tell me a bit more about the projects that you have running at the university and how they help the youth understand, not only understand the fabric itself, but build a career and a future for themselves in something that is so uh, uniquely South African. Yeah, well we started with the NMMU and we got involved basically. We sponsored part of their curriculum um, whereby somebody comes in and teach them about mohair and how to work with mohair. Then we also uh, are a major contributor towards the end of year fashion show um, and we offer bursaries to students who show a specific interest in mohair like Laduma. We've got a similar project with the university in Japan uh, called Mode Gakuen. Wow. Yes, and there we sponsor their third year um, uh, fashion design students with yarns and with materials to actually create a stunning and fashionable mohair garment in. Wow. Japan is traditionally the biggest end consumer market of mohair products in the world. And we are sit with the same problem that the younger generation don't know what a fantastic firebird is. And we're trying to do the same and instill the same values in those younger generations. Yeah. And we're also getting involved with a university in the UK called Nottingham Trent, yeah. whereby we are also wanting to expose the students to, um, to MOE. Uh, what you must understand is, you know, everybody, the whole world is you know, going towards synthetics. And yeah. we want to bring the people, the fashion designers, back to natural fibres back to Moe, it's a sustainable fibre and it's got so many wonderful attributes. Lovely stuff. And well, th that's what we're trying to achieve. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you for, for contributing what you do to the South African youth and the development of our future as well as a country. Thank well, you. stay right where you are when we come back after the break. More wonderful designs from Mr. Laduma Ngogoda. Stay with Expresso and SABC3.